Hey, what's up, hottie by the body? Hey. How we doing? Oh, you know. Hey, uh, we'll do a little sound check here. All right, so where have we been for the last uh, four weeks, six weeks? Uh, Try nine weeks, we've been sick. <laughs> yeah, we really have been. It's been a crazy, crazy journey here. Uh, where are we at in the whole house build process? So we, I know it's been a long time, like, just really quickly, we've kind of restructured the way we're doing videos. Like we're not gonna be really putting the kids in them, which makes it really difficult when we don't have childcare because we are in 300 square feet. So where we are in the camp where the kids are. So that's why we haven't been able to put out a video for you guys with being sick. We obviously didn't want to have the grandmas over to like watch kids or anything. And a lot's happened on the house. I don't even remember where we left off, but we're currently prepping for paint, which is crazy. Yeah. So uh, really quick though, also we weren't just sick. We had like pink eye for a couple of weeks. We had this respiratory <laughs> cough for, <coughs> I'm still coughing, respiratory cough for like two or three weeks. So it was six to seven weeks of ridiculousness. So it we doesn't hospital really- hospital visits. Like, I don't know how many times we've been to the doctor, telehealth appointments. It was awful. I had pink eye, I think, on and off five or six times. Five times. Like, so that doesn't relate. That sounds insane. It doesn't relate anything to the house, um, other than we couldn't really film as much as we wanted to. But also interestingly, uh, here's where we're at. It's at a really cool checkpoint because they're starting to tarp off and getting ready for paint. So like the next big thing is happening on the house. Before that though, uh, Gary was in here, our trim carpenter, and doing tons and tons of work. He's been here for gosh, two and a half months. At least, yeah. But like, it's hard to document all the daily things he's doing because it doesn't look like much happens day to day. Yeah. So I was kind of struggling, like what do I do for a YouTube video other than maybe doing some price breakdown videos or hey, some like a, selection videos. There's the spindles on the rail up today. Yeah, there's like a, there's like seven more spindles. The door got hung. <laughs> it's kind of like nothing big or macro, you know? Yeah. So that being said, um, we're feeling a little bit better. I, of course, as soon as I start the film, I, of course I get this cough, but they're getting ready for paint. And then you're gonna start seeing Really the next like eight weeks, things come together really quick. Yeah, uh, we, the countertops are gonna go in in the next couple weeks. I think we get our appliances, which like once it's painted come in. and the floors are gonna go in, like yep. it's like a house, like a real, you could live here functioning house, which is insane to me. There's some things like, they're estimating a June like finish supposedly, but we're in the garage right now. Nothing's even mudded out here. I know things like that can go quick. So maybe we're thinking like, June, by June they meant June 30th, I don't know. <laughs> we're not in like a super big rush, we're just happy to be here, the barn's functioning, so like that's cool, but yeah, I'm excited to see it. Like we're, we're in like a lull and now it's gonna be like bing, 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 bing. Yeah, we've got hardwood, we've got countertops, we've got all the finished uh, tr trim and appliances, right? The doorknobs. The, the doorknobs, the hardware, uh, lighting fixtures are coming, uh, we've got have they even seen Emmy's Playhouse under the stairs? I don't even know where we last Okay, so shot. we have a lot to show you guys. Let's get going. All right, before we jump into it, big thumbs up if you guys appreciate the videos. Big thumbs up. You guys know how it does. Uh, help the algorithm and all that. Before we go running too far ahead, our brick came in. Oh, yeah. So I posted on Instagram stories a few times, like, do we do brick? Do we not do brick? A lot of you said don't do brick because of it's going to be rough on your feet and it's hard to clean were the two biggest things. But we can't let go of can't the, the brick it. idea. Like I know that's what we've always pictured, and if we hate it in a few years, we'll rip it out. Um, but we did look into place, like ways to seal it to make e cleaning easy, and I'm really I have a, I have high hopes for that. Um, but the brick we found is so freaking cool to me, you guys. Brian found it on Instagram actually, um, and like messaged the person to see where they got it. It's from the Chicago area. It's reclaimed, so it's old brick. We'll leave a link in the description. Yeah, it's like uh, Chicago Brick Supply or something like that. They re purpose it from like actual I don't know reclaimed brick. brick yeah yeah and it has makers marks in it and stuff and it's really um, textured and where we're putting it is right when you walk in the door we have give a lot of snow and ice here in Michigan so we didn't want like tile slippery floors because it just seems super dangerous so I did want something with a little bit of texture I know the whole cleaning thing I'm, I'm hoping through sealing it will make it easier to clean but you can just see all the character it's gonna add to the house and you guys know since the beginning something I've been kind of afraid of with doing a new construction home is lack of character so we put a ton of thought into all of the trim detail and stuff on the house the floors are with a wider plank white oak floors and I really wanted to add character to the mud, room the mud hall because it's like your first you know when you walk in um, it's where the kids are gonna get their shoes on and stuff. I don't want I just don't want people falling So um, definitely didn't want to take the wood through there and didn't want to do like a smooth tile So I'm so excited to see it come in. We're gonna do a herringbone pattern um, like this 
and a super thick, chunky grout. I'd really love to do a German schmear, but we were kind of worried about the wear of that on the floor. So the, how we're gonna get and like kind of achieve that look is with a super thick, messy grout, um, not necessarily going over the bricks. See what that looks like, and if we want to add some more on top, we can, and just make it a really organic kind of textured look. I'm super, super pumped for it. And then in the transition, I can show you in there. Instead, of, we're gonna go from herringbone, which is like, you know, traditional, whatever, herringbone, however you do that. And then we're gonna do two rows of vertical brick to make the transition from the brick into the hardwood. It'll look really, really cool. I have an inspo photo I can actually probably give to you, Brian, you can include it in the video. I can't wait to see this go in. I'm probably, out of all of the tile in the house, beyond our, well, we have some really, actually, we have some really cool tile. I love all of our tile. As much as I hated that process, I, it's been one of the most exciting things. I don't even know if they've seen, have they seen the tile? No, dude, I'm telling you, we haven't shot a video for six weeks. It's all covered painting, so we'll have to show you on a different video. Um, once the paint's done, you guys can see the uh, tile, because it's all covered right now, but it came out so good, so good. Anyways, should we get it going? Yeah, before we jump in, we can do a little house tour. A lot of people have seen the house, so we'll show the what's new stuff. Um, you're 10, 11 months into, well, no, 12 months into this thing. Yeah, how are you? Been, how are you feeling? Months. Yeah, how are you feeling? How's the bank account doing? How are you with uh, expectations? How's uh, Miller Building Company, Andy Shelby? So, I'll start with like expectations. Going into this, we were told it could be a fourteen-ish month build, and we told other people like you know it, when they asked like how long our house would take, and they're like, oh, 14 months. That's crazy. There's no way it's gonna take fourteen months. And like, I can't imagine doing this process any faster with Mike's team because these guys are the real deal. Like, they aren't rushing things. We aren't doing things as quick as possible. Our finished carpenter, like Brian has said, has been here for almost three months doing all of the finishing work details on our house. This isn't like a track home. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there's a reason why custom homes take so long and it's not something you wanna rush. I think it's the most ridiculous thing you can choose to do is like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, here's my house. I think there is a reason why good things take a long time. And we were really prepared going into this from Mike Miller and he set really good expectations for us so that it's not a surprise that it's taking this long because from the very beginning he said this is going to be about a 14 month process, 12 to 14 months. It'll honestly probably be maybe a little bit longer than that once you factor in um, like the groundwork and stuff. But I'm like, heck yes, take as long as you need because I want a nice, solid house. I want our foundation to take a long time because I don't want it to crack. Like, I, there's things that you have to take time on. Um, what is that? You can have good, cheap, and easy or something? Yeah. Or some quick, easy, and cheap, or whatever the saying is. And I, 10 out of 10, would recommend taking your time on building your house. I know that everybody's not in the same situation. Like, we're able to live here on the property and it's kind of more relaxed. Like, if you need a quick turnaround, that's what you need for your lifestyle, and that's one thing. But with this being our dream home, um, I, I really enjoyed the process. I'm kind of sad that it's coming to an end almost. Like, thinking about Gary, our finished carpenter, not being here makes me sad because like every day we get to come out and say hey to Gary not every day we'll bug him but we get to come say hey and like he gets to talk through stuff of hey you know this would look cool in this area or this is a problem I'm working through today like what's your input like this doing this process with these people has been so special to us and I love personally like just because we're on topic of Gary that I'm going to be able to look at my um, fireplace mantle and like know the person who did it very well at this point. He's become a friend at this point. They and really I, have become family. Like Mike, Andy, Shelby, um, I view them as friends. Those, you know, like we see them on multiple times a week. Like I'm really going to be sad when we don't have a reason to see I agree. Them anymore. It's kind of weird. Like they're like pseudo family for like 18 months and then yeah. they're gone, you know? And then it's, but it's so cool. Like this is the house that like they built and I get to know them personally so that I, it's just such a special feeling um even with people that we haven't had a ton of time with like tony with tile they're in and out pretty quick like the tile doesn't take super super long but they're just such good people like when i came into the house you know they had like praise and worship music playing like i just those are the people that i want building my home um not that you have to know every contractor but it is really special when you do get to know them so i love it but oh money wise <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's spring for us, which is our capital intensive for us. Yeah. And so we have payroll going every which way. Like we're getting the season mowing, getting, or getting, getting it mowing, literally yeah. getting the rest out and it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. This, we knew 
we knew it, but until you experience it. <gasps> well, funny thing is like, we outlay a lot of capital for our lawn and landscape company. If you guys are new here, we run a lawn care business. And so we don't get paid from all the spring work until May, June, July, August, you know, some I mean, of these. It was a very light winter. Yeah, it was a very light winter. So financially, it's like you go through this whole process and you know things are gonna cost more money, you know, even if you stay on budget. Which we did not. Which we did not. We knew we wouldn't. <laughs> Nobody would. By the way, like anybody who thinks you're gonna stay on budget, just a quick little bro tip. Throw that thought right out the window. I because mean, you can. I just, I, I think it's unrealistic to want to or it, to expect to. No, I, I doubt. Like, there's probably. It just wouldn't be a very fun process. <laughs> Unless it was like your grandparents. It's like one in twenty people that go to the car dealership and I'm buying a car for nineteen thousand dollars flat. Everybody gets sold the nicer trim, the nicer car, the nicer anything, and just the same process we're going through. We went through countertops and we saw Taj Mahal. We're like, oh. That's a little bit more expensive by a lot. <laughs> We're like, do we want to have good countertops or do we want to go for the best? Well, it's a forever home. We're going to be here 10, 20, 30, 50 years. What's another 10 grand in the grand scheme of things? Like, do we try to finance that or pay cash for the difference? We are very lucky that we are self-employed. I think building a house as a self-employed person can be more stressful, but it can also be stress relieving because we have the opportunity to go out and take on more business to make up for those, like that difference in budget. Totally. Um, if you work for somebody else and you have like a set paycheck, I would just make sure you have a ton of savings in the bank because yeah. it is harder to pivot with like, and like I could see, maybe you do have to stay on more budget if you aren't self-employed. A, a thousand percent, or just just know like, hey, have a safety fund or, or a safety, have a big net safety net that yeah. you're gonna be like, hey, there's an extra hundred grand sitting around or fifty grand sitting around. You're gonna have to tap into that potentially, or borrow something and then pay it off. Just know that there's gonna be some extra overages. Like, yeah. um, our tile was twenty grand over. I'll I'll tell you guys that. Um, our carpentry trim guy probably double the budget. Now, thankfully we can come up with that money by doing YouTube stuff and lawn and landscape and snow work. And if you're not in a position to, you can still like add those things later, I guess. All right, so that being said, uh, you wanna run inside? You wanna go show them the rest of the house? Yeah. All right, let's go jump inside. All right, so coming on in, everything is starting to look I don't hard. think they've seen. No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, first off, what's all the tarp, all the? Because they're gonna get to paint. Well, this is what I'm talking about. Nobody's seen all this. Okay. Wow. All right, so turn around here. And then here, our giant range hood, whatever you want to call this. Um, Gary and I worked pretty closely on this because I wanted these corbels, I think, yeah. to match and reflect our um, fireplace. And he had never done anything kind of like this before. They're nice and big and chunky. Put your hand on that for reference. It's huge. Like, no, I don't know. Like, laid head. across the face. Oh, it's, yeah, it's huge. You think? <laughs> But I wanted this to be like, this is like the Grand. heart of your home. And it's a very big vocal point in our home because it's such a um, flexible space. What is this called? <laughs> Open space. So You should be an interior designer. I, yeah, it definitely. looks grand and it looks beautiful, very flowing and natural. Yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, seven adjectives um, later. And I didn't want to see, I know some people like the exposed hood. I am not one of those people. I wanted it to blend into the cabinets. So this will all be painted and merge into our cabinets. It'll look like very, uniform yeah. and then back here we're doing the slab uh, slab of Taj Mahal all throughout the kitchen I'm so excited because then also like this swoopy detail will also be reflected again here we'll have the slab go up to the um, cabinets and then on the side it's gonna swoop down as well so oh. the details are kind of coming together like matching throughout the house and Adhesive. by the way like this right here is a panel that you guys can tell and this panel uh, is magnet, and it has to uh, be available for access, I guess, up to code. So we were trying to figure out what to do, and Gary came up with a great idea, just have a magnet uh, panel, and then that's something that gives us ac uh, access to the uh, range hood up there. This this up here, this panel the area, is completely different than what we thought on paper we would do. Sure. And it's kind of really come together very organically, and I love how he's done that. Like, it ties in with a lot of our other cabinets and stuff throughout the house that he's built, which is exactly what we're going for. So. I love it, I love it. All right, so um, let's go to these windows. They're kind of blown out because the uh, the backlight, it's backlit, but um, you can see all the painting and the taping, right? Look at this, so there you go. And they've got their protective uh, covering on it anyway, but. I'm it, so glad I'm not the one having to do this. Oh my God, I know. I we painted the nursery and I wanted to, 
we inflict self harm. Did it. Brian's like pulling the tape off and like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the rack's coming off. Oh my gosh. Painting is just not my forte. We are not good at that. But the door is all taped up. Everything's all taped up. Everything's been caulked. You know, it's hard to see every single nuance, every but single one. every single part of the house folks, has been caulked. Like every little detail. You see all the little white, white, white. Like that's some labor. Like those guys, these guys have been working. So shout out to the paint crew, Samir and his guys. Uh, fireplace I haven't seen. No. Bathroom. Let's go, dude. Are you excited? I am. I Two am. more months. Oh, hey, snacks for the guys. 250 bucks later, or 200 bucks later at Costco. Or no, this was like 150 bucks. We bought some other stuff with this order, but Cokes, drinks, chips, rock stars, you gotta take care of the guys. There you go. What are you looking at? I'm just looking at all the details in the ceiling that they had to cock. That's a lot. I, I literally cannot believe. I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up on camera, but every seam. Every seam has been cocked in the whole house. There's gotta be a hundred tubes of caulk in there. That was here. the other, like, we knew but didn't know that there was gonna be an added expense when we put all the trim work together with how much trim we did. When you paint, that's also an added added expense because it all has to be prepped for paint. Right. So it's not just flat wall that it's you know, it's all that little work. Well, so. the, the the glue and the mud, the what do they call it? The fill, the crack filler, everything. It's crazy. Uh, uh, let's go to the bathroom. Okay. Because uh, I want to see if the tile is available. Staircase is here. Big reveal. Give us a second. No, I can't see it. Can't see it. No, it's all. Covered. Oh no, they covered it with. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame them. Oh, they covered the tile. No, oh, you can't see any of it. You can see the shower. But that's not the same thing. So I don't know if we even talked about this on here. I know we talked about it on Instagram, but we ordered Calcutta gold marble for in our bathroom. Um, we did the porcelain version of it downstairs in the guest suite. But in our bathroom, we wanted to invest a little bit more money. Like we're actually gonna be walking in it every day, and I love the feel of like actual real stone. Um, go figure, it's like ten times the price. Dude, what are you talking about right now? You sound like that David Beckham's wife. We like actual real stone and the no, feel I mean, of like, it. What does that even mean? I've never walked on marble or stone. I don't think in my life. Unless it's that been like a Hyatt hotel. But I wanted to, I wanted to feel it every day. Like I wanted. Shut up. Why is that shut funny up. to me? Because it's just. I like to walk on real marble and real stone. Anyways. Forever. So what in we, my big house that YouTube probably bought. The floors are also heated. The floors are heated, and I just want marble, polished, honed walls. What are you talking about right now? <laughs> I wanted to feel it. Anyways, oh, feel like on your so... bare feet, it feels different. I'm not judging. You are. I'm not criticizing. Anyways, what we ordered was funny. gold, Calcutta gold, okay. and it has this nice warm tone in combination with the gray. So you can kind of see like this is um, Calcutta gold as well, a little small hex. It's got a lot of like warm veining through it. And I chose that because we have warm tones in the wood. I don't have any grays in the house. I want everything to feel very cozy because there's a lot of big spaces in here. I didn't want a super sterile envi environment. I wanted it to feel like home for us. I know some people like the grays and stuff like that. So the long We came short, from a gray, gray apartment. Our apartment, if we'll you guys never remember, do gray again. gray floors, gray walls, dark cabinets. I just- That was the trend. It really, really affects me, especially here in Michigan. We have such gray days. I didn't want a gray in my house too. So that's kind of my way of balancing it. But what came in was very gray. It was Calcutta, but it was like the gray. It looked like that slab it behind looked, you. Yeah, it was all this. Not that that isn't really pretty. It's just not at all what we had picked. And mm -hmm. I had already- well, let me show you guys. I don't want to step on this, but you can tell the gray versus let's go down. You can see the gold. Hopefully that can show it with you guys. So you can see the difference in coloration between this, right? And then that, that's distinctively gray. And that's how the big format 12 by 24 slabs came in. And the smaller ones, which we oh, are yeah. completely encasing this alcove where the bathtub is going in that marble. So as soon as you walk in the room, you're going to be like gray. And I hate, like I'm somebody in a restaurant, if my food comes wrong, I'm just going to eat it. Like I, I usually don't say anything, but because this is such a big expense and such a huge vocal point, like as soon as you walk in to our bedroom, this is what you see. Right. I was like, this has to be right. So yeah. it's taken, it took a couple weeks. We actually got to talk to the people that at the quarry, they sent pictures of different um, 
like spots from the mountain and we got to say we like this lot better than this lot they sent a sample into our tile place we got to go look at it in person and verify like because there is a lot of variation in natural stone which we understand but this was like all gray and yeah they didn't want to take any more time away from us because we are kind of down to the wire and getting our um well tile and stuff down getting it all installed yeah uh, and not delaying anything which which the smaller so we have we have big platform on the floor and a smaller but still the same stone going on the nine. walls six by 12 or six by nine something like that yeah. um the thing was one we were spending a lot of money in here so we were like you know and so when we opened it up tony goes you're not in love and we're like Nah. I was trying to, I was like, no, it's still pretty. We're like, oh, pretty. it's really pretty. And he goes, no. no, you need to get exactly what you want. So one, shout out to Tony. Yes. Number two, for helping advise us and give us encouragement to like. Actually say something. Cause say I say something. But then number two was. Um, I feel like you just even have more. <laughs> uh, no, no, I know. Like we're just, we're in the, so in the bonus round. Yeah. So you just sometimes just kind of roll with the punches and you can kind of drift from like what you actually want or want to spend money on. Mm -hmm. And then number two was uh, Beaver. Tile. Tile. They've yeah. been they've been great. Um, Livonia, or Livonia Farmington? Farmington, and they've been great with customer service they because so nice. because not only did they reorder the stuff, but it came in wrong second time because it was polished instead of honed. Yeah. Well, no. Or it was honed. I wanted polished on the wall. I really love the look of polished, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to do polished on the floor because it's I'm more slippery. Like it's already slippery enough yeah. than honed. Um, and for the walls, honed came in and. It still just wasn't wasn't right. Wasn't right. So they reordered it a second time, mm -hmm. and then I found out that it came in again the same way, and they reordered it a third time. Oh my god! And I don't know if that's them or the quarry, but they totally took care of it customer service wise. We didn't even know the second mistake. Um, so it's really good to just have people that like have your back in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really grateful and thankful for that, and it just really goes to show like and your money's value spent there. Well, and it also goes to show to also value your contractors and like beaver tile and stuff we've tried to be a blessing everywhere we've gone like we talked about getting snacks and stuff like i so appreciate everybody's labor and time in our house um you definitely don't want to walk around with like an ego because you're building a house or something no like it's that. a partnership on all these different things all right cool well let's uh let's keep moving and grooving i'm following you we'll have to come back for the tile tour because it does look absolutely beautiful let's see anything new in this these I, sections? I don't they can kind of see our... this this door is new you know the store's new. It's kind of cool. Yeah. What yeah. Here? My safe. Your gun safe. My gun safe. gun safe. Yeah, there's no cash in the safe. We don't have any money left. <laughs> no. Oh my guns. You come for my guns, you'll you'll get them. You can kind of see your vanity that's going into the... Oh yeah, there you go. The white oak. That looks gorgeous. The light is looking absolutely beautiful today, Pookie. You're looking fire. Too much? <laughs> <laughs> but look, every single seam has been... I can't I just can't get over this like this is all the all the labor and effort if you will right I mean every little seam I literally cannot get over because sometimes you know people are here for a week and you're like again folks you don't really see too much going on and you go what have they been doing all week not like you're trying to get roll call no but it's... but then you turn around and you go oh my god every single seam has been cocked like holy cow I didn't even realize we had this many seams <laughs> I know I mean 10,000 linear feet of people, somebody caulking stuff. Like that's a couple miles of caulk. It's crazy. Caulk. Caulk. You should see how many times you can say the word caulk in this video. All right. Need a caulk counter. Bing, 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 bing. All right. Uh, anything new in that room or no? Mm -mm. No. All right. This is all. Oh, hey. So how are we doing on paint? Dude, we haven't even talked paint. Paint, paint, paint. Do you look beautiful? This video is going to be like 10 hours long if I start talking about paint. Give them the 30 seconds. The abbreviated version, like paint colors. I suck. I suck. I suck. I suck. I can see the difference very clearly in undertones, but I don't know how to like play them all together. Um, long story short, we, we chose alabaster for our kitchen cabinets because again, going back to, I wanted a very cozy environment, still light and bright, but nothing sterile. And that is a warmer toned, almost cream, like off-white color. Mm -hmm. But you can't really tell unless you put it up against something. Um, you can tell it's like a softer color, but and then not like a bright white. 
but it's made it hard to choose trim paint color because usually you, if you have a white kitchen, you would choose the same color as your cabinets, which would be fine if I didn't also want to use like a white on the walls, which I can still do. I just have to very carefully choose something that's slightly darker and similar undertones to alabaster. If not, what happens then? If anybody doesn't know paint talk. So if I have like a creamy color on all of our trim work, and then I put a bright white wall next to it, it's gonna make all of our trim work look darker and dingier. You're not really gonna be able to explain why, like, oh, that's a cream, you know, it's just gonna look dingy. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's very on trend right now, too, to do d like a darker trim than the walls, but it, it's almost like a taupey brown, not like a white. So I'm just, I suck. I've actually reached out to somebody for a little bit of help with it. Um, I, my ego, like, like we've made it this far. I haven't really had to reach out for a lot of help, but I don't want to get the paint colors wrong because it's literally everywhere in your house. We, we've seen a lot of bad paint. And I've seen a lot of mis 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 mismatched stuff too, like horror stories. So. And you don't know, you don't know exactly why, but you. You can't really place it, but you're like, something doesn't match. It's usually the undertones and stuff. So. Um, she suggested going with alabaster for the trim, which I think we're gonna do. I do really like it, and then you use a sheen on trim anyway, so it reflects more light. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys can see our kitchen cabinets. They're not dark or dingy or anything. It's just if you put white next, like right next to it, it will look dingier. Yeah, so, so we'll, we'll plug her info if, if she uh, works out. I'm she, waiting to hear back from her if she wants to do the whole project or not. She's <laughs> been like, great. I, I need my paint colors like Yeah, yesterday. she's been great for a couple, uh, couple quick questions. Yeah. Uh, but you guys can see like, all walks and trim what does that say something in cabinets this so this room this is your room we're color drenching this room so it's not really applicable in this room. well yeah but i'm just saying they but, have they have notes yeah. on everything the white side all the trim blue white so we did our paint walk through with samira i should have videoed it but i just had a laugh yeah our staircase is together uh going back to when we first picked all of the stuff for the staircase like how big of a conversation dude we've made Married it building conversation i'm so We're proud still of this together i think this is such a good blend of both of our ideas with the um railing being more my idea and then the posts be or whatever these are called i don't even know your thing and mm -hmm. then i just we went back and forth to another like newels newel posting newel posts um another corbels newels yeah. You know, cupolas. We're learning all We're learning kinds of vocabulary. vocabulary. Should we have like a book for dummies, you know? Sorry. Are you dead? <laughs> vocabulary for dummies for house building. Um, one thing I'll share on this area that we kind of went back and forth on was where to put the newel posts because if we put them in front of the stairs, like you, I think traditionally kind of would, it just seemed like it would take up a lot of space in this area. And then also because we have going down, like, it made this area kind of awkward. So we chose to put them on the step and I really, really love that we did that. Cause it's such a fun, like, like a little, it's cute, you know? Well, again, this is so weird stuff you would never think about. And again, builders can build stuff, designers design stuff, architects, architect stuff, but like carpenters put it in. Yeah. The framers and the rough construction guys put it together. And that's something that, just because it looks like something on paper doesn't mean it's going to translate to real life. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about putting these newel posts here, well now I'm going to lose 6 to 12 inches of, of this hallway, which I didn't want to do. And then, like Liz said, if we put these down here on the floor, right guys, then where does this one go? Right? Because does this one start on the top of the step, the bottom of the, the floor? Does it kick out where this one would meet? If so, you have this like weird 24 inch gap railing, then it swoops down. And it was like, holy crap. It was kind of like this puzzle piece. And then Gary too, with the, um, what is the banister? I forget what the, yeah, the banister, but I forget what they're called, the swoops. The swoops, I don't know the, that one. Trying to figure out like exactly how to line them up so that they meet code, because it has to be so tall. 32 or 36 inches or something. With also keeping like the character integrity of what we wanted the staircase to look like. and. I couldn't be more obsessed with it. I cannot wait to deck this out for Christmas with garland. I That's what I've had envisioned this whole time, and I can't wait to see it this winter. Yeah, let me just give you guys a little pan of it all, because uh, this was like a puzzle piece. Gary did an absolutely amazing job. You know, we wanted some rounded elements. I didn't want the forever banister on top. Some people like that. I didn't. I like that. 
I didn't want the swirl post at the bottom, the corkscrews. I did. Liz did. So Liz wanted these swoops. I wanted the big chunky newels, because if kids are running down, they can just grab and swing. Hey, it's Christmas. Right? So it was like this, it was a huge friction point in our, I think our probably our only biggest friction point moving forward with this thing was uh, figuring out staircase. So here's how it looks from the side. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. Uh, what are you doing for colors? Are we painting? Are we staining? So these rails, banisters, will be stained. The treads themselves are stained, the same as our floor. And the, um, these thingies. No posts? No. Uh, Rods? Whatever these things are called. What are they called? <laughs> really? I don't know. These will be white. Well, they'll be white. The newel posts will be white. Do they get painted? They get painted. Okay, okay. And then this wall will be the same, I think, as our trim. All right, let's keep going. Show them more of the staircase, because this is really, really beautiful. So it's got this swoop, right? We've got another swoop, right? So it's like kind of staying uniform. I, I think Gary did a, a, just a great job. He put some real thought into this thing. One thing that gets us every time we come back downstairs from this is thinking about putting like our babies to bed up here and like the walk back downstairs do. makes we, Brian cry. We do. It does. Like anytime we go like this and then like I was walking down the stairs one day and I was like, I'm like, Liz, I like got the you, feeling. You can like actually like feel like the, what it would be like to live here. Like, I, I, there, I don't know, there's something personal about I had this like just vision, I was like, oh my God, we're living here. I don't know if we've even seen the final update on this. I don't think they got to see this yet. Um, but if you're half hour into this thing, you probably, you do care or you don't care at this point. If you don't care, you left. And so, your, your computer's still running. <laughs> this is all a shower and I wanted to do something a little bit more fun because this will always be a kid's room. We weren't sure which kid would be kind of where, but I think blue is very gender neutral. Um, and the it's like blue, a blue teal. It's like a blue teal, and I think it came out so freaking cute. It's going to be a glass shower here, so you'll be able to really see all the detail. And they spent a lot of time figuring out the exact way to lay the tile so that the pattern all made sense. So like at the bottom, it starts with blue, and it finishes with blue at the top. It was That was kind of like a... It's a math problem. It, yeah, I'm Geometry. glad it wasn't me having to figure it out. And then one thing we also did was the spacing of all of our alcoves, where your studs are and stuff, like your support, I guess, in the wall. Like it, it all is a really big deal. So you can't just put them anywhere. And I wanted to make sure that it fit between two like lines. Like I didn't want to have a break up here. You know, like you wanted it to make sense. So we went back and forth on that for a while, and then they're gonna install the bench when they install the countertops in here. It'll be the same slab. Which I cannot wait. Yeah, but I wish you guys could see the floor. Um, this one's cool, this one's a really classic uh, hex, like a white hex, and then the other one is the one that has the stripes. It came out really, really nice, but another time. All right, coming on down, where are we going? I don't know. Look at the staircase. Looks absolutely beautiful. And you could do like metal aluminum poles, uh, wood posts. There's hundreds of options here, but we love this very traditional look. And also, it was one of the most budget friendly uh, options. So there you go. All right, what's up? This is my reading room. There you go. Isn't it pretty? I don't know the last thing we updated, so might as well just cover it for a minute. I don't know if they've seen this yet or not, but. Um, Gary and I work together on these. I say like we work together. He, he built everything. <laughs> I just kind of pointed. Um, on like just so many little details throughout the whole house. And this room is like my space. And I felt very selfish putting such a big like budget, budget for this room. But I'm so glad I did. Like the trim on the walls. I don't know. Can you see that? With how dark it is? There's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A, uh, light here, but. The trim looks awesome. Doesn't it look so good? And this stuff, folks, is not very expensive to, no, this to do. No, is honestly one of the cheaper, not that it's cheap, cheap, but. Why does it just look like money, though? It just looks so good and so clean. This whole room, I decided, we were gonna do um, a wallpaper on the ceiling, but I cannot find a good wallpaper that isn't directional, that I like. Um, so if you put wallpaper on a wall, there's usually a direction to it. Putting it on the ceiling, it's just not, whatever. It's not working. So I'm gonna do a, um, what is that thing called? The disc thing? I don't know what it's called. <gasps> ceiling disc. medallion. On the ceiling with a chandelier, like a small chandelier coming out. 
and then everything's gonna be floor to ceiling green with gold light fixtures. Very like dark academia, um, Slytherin common room kind of a feel. So Ooh. I'm so excited about this room and I have enough room to do just two big chairs or even like a chase. Cause there's not really gonna be, I don't think people in here besides me. So this is yeah. just my cozy area. I like it. In the future, probably would have made this room a little bit bigger depth wise yeah maybe another like five feet uh because the doors are swinging in you know but if you have like chase in the middle or some uh, chairs on the side it should work out just fine i have to get a little creative with it but still an awesome room obviously all right let's be honest i have two kids we want to have more i'm not going to be doing a whole lot of sitting and reading in this room <laughs> not as much as we probably hope all right um uh, this yeah i don't think we've been down here this is Brian Hall of Fame into his studio, and we chose to do That's why it's a short hallway. Similar paneling on the walls that we did in the dining room upstairs, also reflected in our big uh, accent wall thing on the staircase, and then over here they all have this nice thick paneling, which in such a big because our ceilings are really tall down here. We needed something kind of heavy to ground it, and I think it came out so good. Our other detail in here is our to the shiplap on the ceiling. This is gonna be stained white oak to match the beams that we're putting in on the ceiling down here in the great room, as well as the fireplaces. So similar wood tones throughout the whole house, and then we'll be changing up the wall color to give it its own uniqueness, but I think this came out so good. I'm really yeah. excited because we had talked about painting and like how sad we were to have to kind of paint some of the woodwork throughout the house, but this is meant for staining and we knew that we wanted to stain it ahead of time so we were able to do that. Yep, looks good, looks good. Yeah. All right, well, we're not gonna get too much further probably down the road here because uh, they're working where we're going next, but um, I will just show you really quick that the uh, barn doors are attached, which looks absolutely awesome. Go ahead. I never realized until Gary put our, um, what is this called? Uh, mantle? Mantles on, like how tall and bigger faces <laughs> were. I'm 5'3". Yeah, it's kind of tall. It's pretty tall. It's a big, it's a big fireplace though. It's a 42 inch one, I think, right, remember? Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Maybe not 42, it's probably like 30 inches. All right, so there's your barn doors. Look. There's the barn doors, yeah. I think they have the track system that has to go on the floor still because they're just yes. like free floating. Watch the um, trim, watch the trim. And then there's one that goes here too, or two that go here, just smaller, right here. Love it. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. We're, we asked because I don't want to interrupt them too much. This playhouse though, I don't think you guys have seen it really together. Emmy want, asks about this every single day. She wants to go to Emmy's house and this is Emmy's playhouse under the stairs. I think. With how excited everybody was to put it together, it was fun to see like grown men like Andy and Gary, like they were pumped to put this like together, I guess. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just really excited about it. Uh, we put actual cedar on the roof and we're gonna paint this a fun color. I'm actually gonna pull a few colors and let Emmy pick and see what color she actually wants to put on the house. Right now she said yellow, so it might be yellow. Yellow would be cute. Wouldn't it be cute? But from everything from like the flower boxes to Gary made this door, um, it's the amount of, Time that they spent on it and thought that they put into it. I really appreciate it and I know our kids are gonna love it for years and years and years. He even put vertical shiplap inside that house. I don't know if you can see that really quick. Let's see if I can peek in here really quick. Imagine being like three, four, five years old and this is your play area. All right, like how cool is that? Obviously some work still gotta get done in here. A little bit of a drywall work and some trim, but we hope to not only have our kids enjoy this, but maybe one day it we'll have grandbabies. This makes me cry. This is the staircase makes Brian cry. This makes me cry because if our kids are moms and dads one day, I hope we are still in this house and living and get to see our grandkids play in here one day. I cry for two reasons: one, for what she just said, and two, How this dollhouse cost? cost me probably ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's so horribly awesome. But our kids are so young, like we're not even through our baby years yet, and I know we'll get so much use out of it. So cost per use is gonna be pretty low. That's how I look at things. We're gonna be doing some aerations here in about a week. <laughs> a couple extra mulch jobs. Uh, whatever, it is Aren't what you it so is. glad you did it? It is so cool, I'm so glad we did do it. I'm so glad we finished it. Um, I'm happy for the kids, but I'm even more thinking like, man, if we have grandkids one day and they wanna go to 
what do you say, Mimi and Paw 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 Paw's house or whatever, you know? Chief. Chief, go on. When Brian make a good chief? Okay, okay, okay. Not right now. He's gonna now. cry now. No, I'm not gonna. He's sorry, he's getting off camera. I'm not gonna cry. But listen, that's really, really beautiful. Yeah. It looks awesome. <clears throat> and uh, I'm really glad that you had the idea and the vision to kind of build that. But what I didn't expect is how, like you said, how much the guys were really getting involved with it too. Because they, they made it really special. It was so cute when they saw Emmy for the first time after they had put it together and watching Gary and Andy like ask Emmy and they were so excited. They're like, have you seen your house yet? Come let me show you. Like they were pumped to show her her little house. And again, going back to like what I was saying in the garage about like knowing your contractors and like having a relationship with them, it's just made our house so special. And I'm so thankful for all the people that have like come into our life for this house. It's been, I'm gonna cry now. Like thinking about not seeing them is gonna be really sad. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. But, um, <laughs> Oh, Emmy's already gotten to like test out the house. We had friends over who were thinking about or going to be building, and um, we got to show them like our house and like walk through the process and stuff. And while we were going through things, Emmy had like a little like play date, play date in her little house, and it was so cute to like watch her. Yeah. Get to use it. So. It's really cool. The um, other things down here, just to keep the the work moving, uh, we did select and decide on the LVP for downstairs. Or LVT or whatever they call it, I get it mixed up. LVP? I have no idea. I think it's called LVP. Um, it's actually, it wasn't that crazy expensive. And then we're doing carpet in that back bedroom, my like studio. studio. And that's it. And that's it? Yeah, we went back and forth on doing the, doing carpet in like the homeschool room slash playroom, just because it would be nice to have some cushion on the floor when the kids are so little, learning how to walk and all that. But I think in the long run, um, having some where I can just wipe up messes, because yeah. we're gonna be doing arts and crafts in there, and glitter. Yeah, I just, it. I think will pay off in the long run, having the LVT or LVP, whatever it is, in there, and just some really good thick plush area rugs underneath the climbing things. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's all coming together. And like we said uh, jokingly earlier, like, oh, it's gonna be ready in June. I'm like, June 2025, but the whole home being ready. Because there's a lot to get done. There's a lot to get done. And part of it, if we end up do going over our 14 months, it's on us because we've 100%. had so many delays with selections and stuff, being out of town, being sick for like two months essentially. Yeah. So if we do go past that 14 months, like, no, it's you know, nothing. It's, it's definitely nothing on, on no. Miller guys and Andy. Um, but tandem things moving in line, right? You got LVP, LVT, carpet, like that's ordered, ready to go. Hardwoods at the warehouse, ready to go. Countertops, they're selected, ready to go. We actually got to pick our exact slabs, which we, I think we did a video on. We, they saw that. Okay. Um, that's ready to go. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, lighting fixtures are what we got to do after this. After paint. After paint, but paint space is ready to go. By the way, uh, exterior paint colors, what are we doing that, with that? <sighs> have we decided? So, because we have this giant barn that is beautiful and I love so much, um, but they were very uh, limited on paint color selections. Like you can't just choose, you could choose any paint you wanted, it's just a super expensive thing to do. So we stuck with choosing paint that they had like um, the Morton paint color. Yeah, Morton paint colors. And it's a white, and wanting to do the house white, again, going back to those undertones and stuff, if we choose anything other than something extremely similar or the same as what's on the barn for a white specifically on the house, it'll look, one will look dingy and one will look brighter. So I think we're just gonna do the same color that's on the barn. Um, we're gonna put a big sample on a couple areas in the house, on the house just North to make facing, sure. south facing, yeah, north, south, one but on each we side. We have a pretty good idea because it's the barn. Yeah. Like we can look at the barn and I'm like, oh yeah, I like that white, like that's not bad. Yes. Um, the other but, thing was the wood tones on the outside of the house is like we have a lot of cedar finishes. I think under roof, we're gonna keep the cedar look and then on the exterior, we're gonna pull in the wood that we chose for our garage doors so that everything is nice and cohesive. Yeah, those little pergola things are probably gonna be the, uh, like maybe a mahogany uh, with, a, with a clear coat kind of deal. Yeah, so. Pumped? I am nervously excited. It's always nerve wracking when you make these decisions because everything feels like such a big decision because it is, it's all pretty like permanent, you know? I mean, unless you want to pay a buco bucks to redo it, it, which we're not, which <laughs> we're not in the budget for that. No, a lot of stuff we've already done is not in the budget. Changing what wasn't in the budget isn't in the budget, if you know what I mean. Um, so seeing it all to come together has been, I think more stressful even than making the decisions because you're like, I hope this is turning out the way that I'm wanting it to. And I'm obviously not a professional. I do trust my taste going through this process. I've had some validating moments of like, 
yes, I, I made the right decision. Like I do know what I want. And then some decisions I'm like, maybe could have chose differently isn't awful, but. One thing I'll say is, and I feel selfishly like in a good way saying proud, I guess more maybe is the right word. Nothing here is super trendy. Like it's fun, it's classy, yeah. it's cool. And, but it's like, man, I see so much stuff on Instagram and TikTok and all these people and these interior designer folks. And, and I'm not here to say who's right or wrong. I couldn't care less. But like people painting cabinets like dark blues or like yellows or walls like gray, like our old apartment. That was a huge trend for four years. Our tile, tile guy, I think said that he picked his countertops based on his... The gray. paint yeah. yeah on his paint and now that he wants to paint his walls he's kind of stuck with his he's choices because pigeonholed. because his countertops are a certain material color right so like some things anchor certain things so if you guys go through this whole process just like remind yourself certain things you can't change like square footage or doors or just i don't know but there's certain things in uh, the house. I just get so frustrated when I see these like interior designer if you're gonna influencers. Be, if you're gonna be spending a lot of money on something, may, and you like something, say you love grays or you love blue or you love that, then do that. Like make sure it's something that you love. You don't. You're not just doing it because it's trendy. Like you're, I do believe that if you, you want to have a bright yellow home. kitchen and you've always wanted a bright yellow kitchen, have your bright yellow kitchen. Don't do something that just because it's in style right now. Um, there's already been trends that we've seen come and go since we've started this whole process from buying the land to now there's I don't know how many things we've like been like oh I used to like that but did I really like that or was it did I like it just because it's a trend mm. and we've decided not to go with it and I'm so glad that we did like even our barn doors like barn doors are kind of trendy but the doors themselves are not they're traditional and that's our taste so be just be cautious and careful and like if something's on your heart to do like the brick flooring that I can't let go, right. do that because any other time, like I, I know as soon as I walk into the house, if had I chose something else, I would be disappointed. And I, brick isn't trendy, brick isn't necessarily like a big trend right now, but it's something that I really we wanted. Like. Yeah, and I liked. And that's something I'm very proud of is not allowing like pressure from not society, but just like people or designers or trends um, influence what we knew we wanted yeah because at the end of the day you live here and you're going to see it every day mm -hmm. i think andy or tony reminded us that a week ago uh remember like you're living here at the end of the day so you pick what you like like our arches as an example um i think even when we were doing with the architect they were kind of like are you sure because those are kind of like you know a little trendy also from like the 80s kind of to make a cool door look cool is this something you actually like or is it something that you're being influenced by and i really sat on that for a while and kind of questioned it and i'm i was like no this is this is actually what i want and looking at it i can't imagine having it any other way so i love it yeah all right well let's get out of the way because uh the folks upstairs are looking to finish up the basement i'm sure they're looking to paint here in the next uh day or two which is gonna be cool they're actually uh painting the interior <coughs> <clears throat> They're actually painting the uh, interior of our barn as well, my workbench area. They'll get a black uh, coat on that in the next couple days, which I'm really, really pumped about that. And that thing should almost be done, done. So it's a lot, a lot with deciding on the house, a lot with running the business, a lot with running social stuff, a lot with the barn, a lot with making sure that you're always taken care of and in love with me still. What? And the babies. Well, he said making babies. We're not making any babies right now. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> Okay, yeah, I don't know. Now we're am gonna I, get comments. Am I involved in this process? I don't know. Uh, thanks for watching this far through the video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, of course, leave them down below. If you guys have an encouraging word, we super appreciate that even. Leave us a comment down below. If you guys are praying people, pray for us through this whole process because uh, it brings out the best and the worst in you, as you guys can imagine, uh, in all different good ways. Uh, even, a lot of learning. Like, you would think like because we own a business together, businesses together, we would know how to like work together. We're learning. Better, but this has been the most challenging and also rewarding thing that we've created together. Like we're actually getting to physically see our creation come together. Like the staircase is such a blend of us. It's been one of the coolest things that we've done as a couple, but also one of the most challenging. <laughs> it's been a lot of challenging. So come to together in the tree. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for our marriage conference that we co-host with another great couple in about two more months. So 
Anyway, uh, thanks for guys being flexible and patient with us on uh, dropping more videos. I'm gonna hopefully drop more videos one a week at least, you know, one every two weeks, uh, kind of back to the old schedule rotation because a lot of things are gonna wrap up pretty quick mm -hmm. in the next 60 to 90 days. So I am really pumped about that. Uh, admittedly, it was just like this weird lull for about eight weeks with uh, carpentry and then also we were just deathly sick. This is how rumors start though. They're like, oh, they're getting divorced. <sighs> oh, the house, they went broke. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, thankfully, all is well. Uh, we just had the bubonic plague and we couldn't make videos because we were sick as hell. Um, so any which way, any which way, I say that a bunch of times in this video. Uh, anything else you got left? This is heavy to hold this camera. So you got to do the sign off. Say th thanks, bye, and hi, and- Thanks, hi, and bye. We'll Catch see you on the next one. Isn't that what the Truman Show says? Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Let's nice. Go with that. All right. Bye guys, see All you right. on the next one. <laughs> see you on the next one.